we cannot now go back to where we were. And I am telling you, as I sit here, I have told you the facts on COVID from day one. Whether they were easy, whether they were hard, I told you the truth. Yeah, you've told us the truth about everything, except for the part about the nursing homes and the women. Whoops. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the camera. Happy Monday, everyone. What a great show we have. Kat is back after her life-saving surgery. Now, Kat, let's try to treat this liver better than the last one. Oh, boy. That hobo fought long and hard to keep it. <laughs> and Sandra Smith is back. Good to see her, given, uh, yeah. given her wild weekend. Wow. You're welcome. I didn't know you spoke two languages. And we have a new first time guest, Aisha Hosni. Did I get it? What was she thinking? She'll be firing her agent in the first break. <laughs> All right, tonight's topic. Oh, I know you can't wait. Suicide. Yeah. Now, don't turn the channel until you hear me out, especially when you consider what else is on. I mean, what could Brian Williams be talking about anyway? The Olympics? Again, I'm Brian Williams reporting live from the Tokyo Olympic Games. Seeing these athletes compete reminds me of my own experience winning 39 gold medals in the late 1980s. Whether it was the decathlon, downhill skiing, or knocking out Muhammad Ali in the first round, historians said my universal appeal as an athletic specimen led to the fall of communism. Little did I know that shortly after defeating Ivan Drago in the 15-mile sprint up Mount Kilimanjaro, I would go on to become the first Olympian to finish a race with a negative time. Sadly, I was forced to retire after the World Anti-Doping Agency determined that my soul was a performance-enhancing drug. Now back to the games. Nicely done. And what could be on CNN right now? Maybe they're digging into the crime epidemic now that it's affected their dining experiences. How can I enjoy my pre-opera champagne and escargot when there are drive-bys happening everywhere? Yeah, I know what you mean. I've been feeling really unsafe lately when I go to pick up my caviar in my waxed Lamborghini. I was on my way to the theater, and I saw a poor stab another well poor. It was a midnight showing of Les Miserables. Wow. Yeah, oh, and I paid Annie Leibovitz to take glamour shots of my cat in her new diamond tiara, and there was a bum defecating in the background <laughs> of every single shot. That reminds me, my five-month-old was helicoptering home from baby boarding school recently, <laughs> and he was late because the pilot got caught in a gang crossfire. Oh, <gasps> your poor baby. <laughs> Now, like many geniuses, I worried about the lockdown's impact on kids and teens. And I don't even like kids or teens. <laughs> For the same reason I don't like college students. They don't know what they're talking about, and they always need money. Sounds like a Democrat. <laughs> nice red meat joke, Greg. Way to know your audience. Thanks, God. But I figured lacking interaction with their peers would hurt their ability to communicate and cooperate. Plus, they forget to bathe and floss, so they smell like a chunk of gorgonzola. Mm. Just kidding, nobody flosses, right, Kat? <laughs> plus, plus they, use, they lose a year of education. But considering what they're being taught, that could be a plus. I mean, how are they going to learn how racist they are while not learning math? But I was holding two contrary thoughts in my head, which is already twice my capacity. On one side of my brain, I believe the one-size-fits-all regiment of school harms kids, especially in public schools, which is about one step removed from factory farming. And we aren't even getting Soylent Green out of it. The factory might pollute a stream, but schools pollute your kid's mind. But the other side of my brain says, hey, these kids are going to be ruined forever if they don't get back to class. They're missing out on so much. But that really doesn't make sense. That's like saying to a soldier who is laying in a hospital, we've got to get you back to the front. You're missing out on so much. <laughs> what, these students are, what are these students missing out on, really? Judging by our test scores, it's not an education. 
And given the behavior of teachers unions, it's hard to say what's worse, school or the lockdown. So after years of wondering about the coming mental health crisis, the CDC released data showing that suspected suicides dramatically increased among girls ages 12 to 17 in the U.S. compared to 2019. But oddly, and this is weird, the rate is inversely related to school closures, meaning when schools close, suspected suicide attempts actually go down. Then when schools reopen, the attempts go up. It's like children suddenly had dirt on the Clintons. So again, schools close, suicide attempts among girls drop, then schools open, they rose. Then when schools close for winter vacation, the attempts plunge again. Then when the schools reopen again after that, the attempts suddenly jump. This is weird. There was no increase for boys during reopenings, but they did see the drop in lockdowns too. So all of this sounds totally counterintuitive, but it's not. Once you realize that suicide death rates based on decades of data show that it falls during the summer and Christmas vacation. So it's not actually unique to the pandemic. It's what happens when you leave school for any reason. So how do you explain this? Well, school sucks. And when you're home away from school, you're also away from the crap that preys on adolescent insecurities, the cliques, the bullying, the need to belong. Meanwhile, at home, you aren't forced to change for a gym class in front of all the people that just made fun of you. A shout out to Kilmead. <laughs> it's a vicious prank. Take kids when they're least immune to peer pressure and throw them into a sea of preening piranhas who have better clothes and more money. On top of that, add teachers who realize that the model of teaching is to keep it bland. And if you're the kid who's unconventional or a little slower or a genius, you end up left out. The lonely kid at the cafeteria table. You think it's a coincidence that Richard Branson, Einstein, and Walt Disney all quit school at 15? I'm guessing it wasn't the curriculum they found too difficult. Meanwhile, when you're home with the people who love you, when you're with them, no matter how mad mom or dad get at you, they're not going to stuff you in a locker. So sometimes science reveals a connection between things that we always knew to be true but couldn't say out loud, that family is good, peers are bad, and school is a prison. So maybe Zoom classes weren't so bad after all. And as for the kid who is eating alone at the cafeteria, I think about you a lot. Stay strong. When you're an adult, you'll realize the opinions of the teachers and children around you, now they don't matter. High school will end. In the real world, their conformity is a weakness, while your uniqueness is a strength. No one ever said, you know why I like that guy? He is totally average and goes along with what's popular today. If they did, then CNN would be popular. Niceness where boxing, she's a refreshing punch in the face. America Reports co-anchor Sandra Smith. She makes it her business to know everyone's business. Fox News correspondent Aisha Hasney. Yes. She's wiry, fiery, and would kill you if you read her diary. Fox News contributor Cat Tim. And he always brings down the house if he decides to lean on it. My massive sidekick and host of Nuff Set on Fox Station, Tyrus. Sandra, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. You look like a highly sophisticated real estate agent. I, know, I meant to take <laughs> off my jacket when I got, you know, kind of get into that. But I did put on my, my gut felt earrings. My I like those. Jacket. I like those. Yeah, so. All right. So you had said to me before the show, I don't understand this talk, what you're getting at, Greg. My point is, I, be, I think that school is worse than a lockdown. Am I wrong or am I right? I think I right? that's incredibly pessimistic and sad. I see where you're going. I see that you're trying to connect the dots. Yes. As many have during COVID in these closures, and it's never anything to joke about the suicide rate because we did highlight that there were suicides that took place during these COVID shutdowns. Mm -hmm. Kids, some of them were having a really hard time with this. So I don't think you can connect the dots, and they didn't say there's a direct correlation either. But I think it's an interesting observation. And Greg, I think now having listened to your monologue, I understand where you're coming from. And the COVID shutdowns did force a lot of kids to spend a lot of more time with their parents and their yes. families. And so while you're pointing to this happened on a lesser rate when these kids were home under the watchful eye of their parents, don't forget while they were home, a lot of these parents were not going into their offices for 10, 12 hour days. And they understood more what their kids were going through. There was a more communication. I think it also highlights something we talked about a lot along the, the pandemic way, and that was parents were looking over their kids' shoulders, what they were learning in these mm -hmm. classrooms, what their teachers were talking about, what they were... I, so I think there's obvious negatives about the, uh, the COVID pandemic, but 
perhaps what you're trying to do is highlight uh, some sort of positive about the parents at home yes. are able to see what their kids are doing. They are the support network. But Greg, I am long-term positive on our schools. I think there's bad teachers unions, there's bad teachers, but I think overwhelmingly we have good schools and good teachers out there. And I hope, I hope our school systems can come around to a place where we are educating our kids better. I really do. Well, I think the conclusion from your words are that you agree 100% with me. <laughs> somewhat, somewhat. Sounds like uh, it. Yes, uh, I say, um, I, I, I Sandra kind of hits on it. You're getting away from some of the things in school and you're spending more time with your family. Mm. Yeah. Could that be the th could that be the correlation? Could that be the cause? I think that's a, that's an excellent point. I just want to say the only thing I miss about school is rectangle pizza. <laughs> Y'all remember like, can I Solid. who remembers rectangle pizza? I do. No. That plastic cheese is yeah. so much better than New York pizza. <laughs> um, that is the only thing I wow. miss. Wow. That um, is a statement. <laughs> the rectangle pizza is better than New York pizza. I miss it so much. I Ooh. wish I could find someone to send it to me. You can get um, it in any freezer section, I'm pretty sure. Or I've Costco, never been able Sam's to find Club. it. Yes. All right. Or maybe a Costco child. after this. <laughs> um, look, when I was a kid growing up in Indiana, I was this, like, you know, little immigrant child from Pakistan that was uh, just trying to be cool. I was super hairy, you know, brow. <laughs> it was not the time of my life. Um, I didn't even I get to go to. Believe. That. I didn't get to go to prom. Can I get a boo for that? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go to prom. Um, They're told not to boo. <laughs> They're, so They're like, like, what do we right do? Now. Is this a yes. trick? Yeah, that is, you're the first person <laughs> that ever asked the audience to boo. <laughs> I mean, I, I still, still deeply regret that. Um, my mom and dad would not let me go. But even though high school was tough, I learned so much. I feel like I grew so much um, during that time. And now I go back and I talk to kids in Bedford, Indiana, and I try to do exactly this, like to prevent teen suicides and or like getting knocked up or you know mm -hmm. dying of a drug overdose or so many things that can go wrong. Um, but I think like I would advocate for the Gutfeld show to go on the road. Ah. And yes. start speaking to schools <laughs> to show them, like, I'm not allowed to what, life, yeah, whoops, yeah. what life could be like. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. We are going to go on the road at some point, but we just have to deal with the legal system first. Well, you do. <laughs> I'm not putting on that ankle bracelet again. Oh my God. It beats all the time. All right, Tyrus, you have a number of children. Yes, yes, thank you for always bringing that up. Um, <laughs> but I'm an active parent, so yes. whatever. Um, <laughs> Here's, and as a former teacher, what we're seeing here, and you're actually, you're both right. Mm. And this is, this is why this is such a tough subject. Mm. For boys, it's different mm -hmm. because we settle our stuff physically mm -hmm. in groups and stuff. And it's a lot easier for boys to overcome bullying mm -hmm. and because they, it doesn't follow them home. Yeah. yeah. They have to wait till the next day at recess. Right. Typically. And then eventually they all get in trouble and they become friends. Mm-hmm. Girls, on the other hand, uh. and I have three daughters. Uh. No, and I'm Getting most, and, but this is where the parents have to, especially fathers, have to be active roles in their daughters' lives when it comes to self esteem and being able to deal with stuff because girls become hooked on likes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's That's not true. just over when they come to school and their outfit doesn't look good or they're, and I didn't go to prom either, by the way, and, they're, <laughs> and, and someone makes fun of them or says they're fat. They go home and they get on Facebook and that same group of girls has now got a picture of them going, how fat is she in a scale of one to 10 and she sees all the likes or she goes, she puts a new selfie up and no one likes it. Mm -hmm. It carries over. And unfortunately, our media, mm -hmm. the things that we look important, the role models that we have for girls out there and no disrespect to the Kardashians, but when you spend millions of dollars on plastic surgery and things like that and you come on and talk about girl power and things you need to do, they can't, they can't get a boob job and mm -hmm. hair extensions and nose and all, and that, no, but that's what the girls see. Yeah. And they're passing it off as they did it through hard work and they just had it. So when our girls see this, it's not just school because at school they get bullied and then it's waiting for them when they get home. And this is where you gotta be a parent. You gotta see what they're doing on social media. Yeah. You gotta see when your daughter's getting picked on. You gotta see when your daughter thinks it's more important how she looks in the morning opposed to did she do her homework last night. Right. Those are things that we probably saw during the pandemic, and they didn't have to do it mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Then they go to school, and those things are waiting for them. If they gain weight during the pandemic, right. mm. if dad lost his job and she's wearing the same shoes that when school, mm. and the girls are like, ooh, she's not fab, she's not this. That stuff's devastating for girls, and we need to do a better job 
especially fathers, as reinforcing our daughters that that doesn't matter because our sons don't care. They'll have a pizza stain on their shirt all day and be like, what? I had pizza. I love it. It's rectangular. Square rectangular yeah. pizza. <laughs> Where daughters will be like, I have a stain on my shirt and we'll hide in the bathroom all day. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well Cat, Cat, you said you were experiencing a flashback and yeah. I want to point out that this was unique because it wasn't drug related. Right. Well, it's, you know. Uh, damn. <laughs> could might might not be. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, and like I didn't care how I looked at all, uh, which was probably part of the problem. <laughs> I want to start. <laughs> I want to start a, a charity for hair extensions for the kids. I should do. <laughs> uh, but no, like boys, you're right. Like girls, they will punch you in the soul. I had so many flashbacks. Like, I was sitting at this lunch table where there was multiple like multiple friend groups, and it was full. And Michelle came over, and she's like, "Ugh." Why doesn't Kat just sit on the floor? <laughs> like, like who does that? That's not wow. okay. Why do I find that funny? Oh, it was. I got thrown out of a party. You're the mean kid. I went to a party after a dance one time, and everyone there had a wristband on. They were like, "Where's your wristband?" Uh, oh, sorry, only cool kids got the wristbands. Uh, you have to leave. And I it was so bad. And I where are they now? Where are the cool kids now? Exactly. They all got pregnant at 19. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, but it, like, I, it's like I'd love to say I don't care, but I did go to my high school reunion like 10 years after my 10 year high school reunion like I you know have had some success at that point and everyone was trying to talk to me and I was still kind of like <laughs> like I still it still mattered yeah there you go don't cry oh I, I don't know that's just my eyes are just bloodshot <laughs> all right <laughs> I'm glad we worked our way through this uh. topic yes America more fun up next they lit the Olympic hey Sean Hannity here hey click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else.